Hello everyone, and welcome to a single example of using kinematic equations to solve problems of one-dimensional projectile motion. So here's our problem. A minivan falls off of a 221 meter tall building. Now, I don't know why a minivan is at the top of a 221 meter tall building. I don't know why a minivan is falling off of a 221 meter tall building, but if you were in the minivan, there's probably two things you would like to know at that instant. At least there's two things that uh, I would like to know as I was falling off of a 221 meter tall building. The first is, just how fast am I going to hit the ground? Or as it says in more formal language, what is its velocity as it hits the ground? So if you remember our techniques of using kinematic equations in the past, there's a couple of questions you want to ask yourself to help you set up the problem. First question is, what do you need to know? What is it asking you to find? Well, obviously here it's asking you to find a velocity. But remember that there are two velocities in the kinematic equations. There's the initial velocity you start with and the final velocity you end with. Since this is your velocity as it hits the ground, notice, not after it hits the ground when it would be zero, but as it gets to the ground, this is your velocity at the end and therefore is your final velocity. Remember that the y here is because it's vertical. Right? It's free fall. Now, what else do we know? What other things are we given in the problem? Well, there's only one number in the problem, the height of the building. So that's how far you are going to fall. But be careful here. What direction are you going to fall? And of course, you're going to fall down. So your vertical displacement is negative 221 meters, not positive 221 meters. That's a negative that a lot of people miss. But if we're going to use a conventional coordinate system where up is positive and down is negative, your final vertical position is below your starting position. Right? And so you end up with a negative displacement. Now, that's the only number. But we need three things to put into the uh, kinematic equations. So there's other things we could read in. First of all, if you fall off of the building, your initial velocity would, of course, be zero. The O, remember, means initial. The Y means vertical. And the other thing is that this is going to be a problem of one-dimensional projectile motion. In other words, we are assuming free fall. We are assuming that gravity is the only thing acting on the minivan, so we're neglecting any air resistance effects. And if we're doing that, then we automatically know that the acceleration, given by a lowercase g, is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Again, negative because it's down. That means that as the minivan falls, it will get 9.8 meters per second faster every second that goes by. So, we're looking for the final velocity. We know these three things. There is one and only one equation that has those four things, and that is the ever popular fourth kinematic equation. Final vertical velocity squared equals initial vertical velocity squared plus two times the free fall acceleration times the vertical displacement. Now, we are trying to find Vy, but before we start doing algebra, we have a zero. Voy is zero. And if the initial vertical velocity is zero, the initial vertical velocity squared is also zero. So that makes the problem a little easier to deal with. So we end up with final vertical velocity squared equals two times the free fall acceleration times the vertical displacement. So if we want to find Vy, not Vy squared, we of course would have to take the square root of both sides. But hang on a second. If I asked you what the square root of nine is, what would your answer be? Hopefully, your answer would be positive 3 or negative 3. So technically, when we take the square root of both sides, we get the positive or negative root mathematically. Now, there's only one correct answer, so we need to think about which one we want, positive or negative. Right? This is a vector equation, so the positive or negative means direction. So if we want the velocity as it hits the ground, well, as it hits the ground, it will be going down. And therefore, we'll have, a negative, uh, we'll have a negative final velocity. So we're going to choose the negative answer here. If you miss the negative here, you know, that would be, uh, you wouldn't have a complete answer. Now, sometimes we get around that by asking what is its speed as it hits the ground. So then we're not asking for a vector. And then whether you put the positive or negative on doesn't matter. Okay? But in this case, I asked for a velocity, so I need a direction. Notice here as I plug the numbers in that if we had forgotten the negative on the displacement, a common thing to forget, we would have ended up with a negative under the square root. And although I made up this problem, I don't want an imaginary answer. I want a real answer. 
So you'd have to go back and figure out you know, where your negatives come in. But now they cancel out. So the only negative we have is out here, which you take after you multiply and take the square root. So you get a final vertical velocity of negative 66 meters per second, which I think is around like 150 miles an hour. I mean, so you're going to really smack into the ground when you get there. Now, if that hasn't taken you too much time already, <laughs> part B, the other thing you might want to know, is how long do I have to live? Right? How long am I going to stay in the air before I smack into the ground? So first question, what do we need to know? We're looking for time. Second question, what are we given? Well, we're given the vertical displacement, again, negative 221 meters. We're again starting from rest, and we have a vertical acceleration of negative 9.8 meters per second squared because we're assuming this is free fall. Now, we could use what we found in part A, the final vertical velocity, but it's always a better problem solving technique to only use givens. You're less likely to mess that up. That way, if you got A wrong, you won't also get B wrong. And in this case, there is an equation we can use that has only these four things in it. The ever popular, used a lot in this unit, third kinematic equation. It says the vertical displacement is equal to the initial vertical velocity times the time plus one half the free fall acceleration times the time squared. Now again, before we do algebra here, we know the initial vertical velocity is zero. So if this is zero, zero times t, also zero. Right? Anything times zero is zero. That's one of the big errors. Sometimes people will cancel out the VOI, but then they leave the T. Right? That's zero times T, so that's zero. So we're just left with this. I'm trying to find the time, so I need to move the one half. I can move the one half by multiplying by two. I can move the G by dividing by G, and I can get rid of the squared by taking a square root. Now, if you need to write out each step, feel free, but you don't have to. You could go right from here to here, and I'd be happy. Okay, So if you're a good algebra student and you want to skip some steps, go ahead, but you, know, you have to make sure you get them right. If you want to write out every step, hey, by all means, do it. Just takes a few seconds, and you'll be, you know, get the answer right. Plug in our numbers, and notice again, if we had missed the negative on the vertical displacement, we would have ended up with a negative under the square root, and that's an imaginary number, and I want a real answer. So plug those numbers in you get 6.7 seconds. So if I'm riding in that minivan, I have a little less than seven seconds before I hit the ground going about 150 miles an hour. So I hope you enjoyed this little example. And that's not an, you know, all the math you need to know. But it does show you uh, kind of the technique. What are you looking for in the problem? What are they asking you to find? What are you given in the problem? You need to have at least three of those, so sometimes you have to read into the problem. That'll lead you to a kinematic equation, which you can then solve and plug the numbers in. And ideally, you solve it symbolically and plug the numbers in last. Thanks, and I hope you enjoy a third attempt to use the kinematic equations.